By the end of this lesson, students should be able to use the base angles theorem and its converse to find the measurements of angles and sides for triangles. The base angles theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. Notice here that we have a triangle. Two sides of the triangle are congruent to each other. Therefore, due to the base angles theorem, the two angles that are opposite those two sides that are congruent are also equal to each other. The converse of the base angles theorem states that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. Notice here that we have a triangle in which two angles are congruent to each other. Therefore, the sides opposite them are also congruent to each other. Here's an example of the base angles theorem. Here we have a triangle in which two sides are congruent to each other. Therefore, we know that since the two sides are congruent to each other, the angles that are opposite those sides are also congruent to each other. So for angles P and angles Q, and angle Q, we're going to use X to represent the value of those angles, the measurement of those angles. Now, due to the triangle sum theorem, we know that the sum of the measurements of the angles of a triangle are all equal to 180. So we set 180 equal to 30, which is one of the measurements of the triangle, plus x, plus the other x. The rest becomes algebra. So 180 equals 30. We combine like terms, x plus x gives us 2x. We then subtract 30 from both sides. So 180 minus 30 and 30 minus 30 plus 2x. So 180 minus 30 gives us 150. 30 minus 30 gives us zero. And so we're left with 150 equals 2x. In the next step, we have 150 equals 2x. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by two. What you do to one side, you do to the other. And we're going to divide both sides by two because we're trying to isolate the x. So 150 divided by two equals 2x divided by two. 150 divided by two gives us 75, which equals x. 2x divided by two gives us x. So the measurement of the two unknown angles is 75. Here's another example of the base angles theorem. Again, notice that we have two sides that are congruent to each other. Therefore, the angles opposite those sides are also congruent to each other. So the measurement of angle Q and the measurement of angle R, we're going to let X represent those angle measurements. So again, due to the triangle sum theorem, we know that the, me the, the total measurement of a triangle is equal to 180. So we're gonna let 180 equal 48 plus x and plus the other x. So the rest becomes algebra. We're going to combine like terms. So 180 equals 48 plus 2x. Then we're going to subtract 48 from both sides to isolate the 2x term. 180 minus 48 gives us 132. 48 minus 48 gives us zero, so it's 132 equals 2x. Now to isolate the x term, the x variable by itself, we're going to divide both sides by two. So 132 divided by two equals 2x divided by two. 132 divided by two equals 66, which equals x. 2x divided by 2 gives us x. So the value of the unknown angles is 66. Again, here's another example of the base angles theorem. Notice that we have two sides which are congruent to each other. Therefore, due to the base angles theorem, we know that the angles that are opposite those two sides that are congruent are also congruent to each other. So on one side, 
one angle that's opposite to a side of congruence is 62 degrees and the other is X. Therefore, due to the base angles theorem, we know that the angles are congruent to each other. Therefore, 62 is equal to X or X equals 62. Now to find the value of P, we know the entire value of the triangle, the measurements within the triangle all add up to be 180. Therefore, 180 equals 62 plus 62 because we know that X is 62. And we're going to let the measurement of angle P equal to, we're gonna let it be equal to Y. So the rest becomes algebra. So it's 180 equals 124 plus y. So now we subtract 124 from both sides. 180 minus 124 gives us 56, which is equal to y, because 124 minus 124 is zero. So we bring down the y. So the final value of the measurement of angle P is equal to 56, so y equals 56. Here's another example of the base angles theorem. Notice again that two sides of a triangle are congruent to each other. Therefore, we know that the angles that are opposite those two sides of congruence are also congruent to each other. Therefore, we know that the measurement of angle Q is equal to the measurement of angle P. The measurement of angle Q is represented by the expression, the algebraic expression, 11x plus eight. And the measurement of angle P is represented by the algebraic expression 5x plus 50. Therefore, we set 11x plus eight equal to 5x plus 50 because those two base angles are equal to each other. The rest becomes algebra. So the first step is that we subtract eight from both sides. Eight minus eight gives us zero and 50 minus eight gives us 42. So 11x is brought down because eight minus eight is zero. This equals five x. And then again, 50 minus eight gives us 42. So five x plus 42. So 11 x equals five x plus 42. The next step in isolating the variable x is to subtract five x from both sides. So we subtract 11x minus 5x and 5x minus 5x plus 42. 11x minus 5x gives us 6x, which is equal to the 42. The next step in isolating x is to divide, is to divide both sides by 6. 6x divided by 6 is equal to 42 divided by 6. Therefore, 6 divided by 6 gives us 1, and x is equal to 42 divided by 6, which is 7. So x equals 7. So now we're asked to find the value of the unknown angles. We found the value of x. We now have to find the value of the unknown angles. Therefore, we substitute the 7 for the x that we just found into both expressions, both algebraic expressions for the measurement of angle Q and the measurement of angle P. So 11x plus eight, we're going to substitute the seven for x. So 11 times seven plus eight, 11 times seven gives us 77 plus eight. 77 plus eight is equal to 85. For angle P, we're also going to substitute the seven for x. So five times seven plus 50, five times seven equals 35, and then 35 plus 50, 35 plus 50 equals 85. So again, it checks out. Here's an example of the converse of the base angles theorem, which tells us that if two angles are equal to each other or congruent to each other within a triangle then the sides opposite those angles must be congruent to each other. Therefore, we set 7x equal to 3x plus 40. The rest becomes algebra. The first step is to subtract 3x from both sides. 
So 7x minus 3x and 3x minus 3x plus 40. 7x minus 3x gives us 4x, which is equal to 40, because 3x minus 3x is 0. The next step in order to isolate x is to divide both sides by 4. So we divide 4x by 4, and we divide 40 by 4. 4x divided by 4 is x, and 40 divided by 4 equals 10. Therefore, x equals 10. That's the final value of x. The next step is to substitute the 10 that we got for x into the expressions for the sides of the triangle. So the expressions are again 7x and 3x plus 40. So we're going to substitute 10 for x. 7 times 10 equals 70. And finally, for side PR or RP, line segment PRP or RP, we're going to substitute the 10 for the X. So 3 times 10 plus 40. 3 times 10 is equal to 30 plus 40. 30 plus 40 equals 70. Here's another example of the converse of the base angles theorem. Notice that we have a triangle in which two angles are congruent to each other. Therefore, we know that the sides that are opposite those two angles of congruence are also congruent to each other. We have two angles in which the measurement is 50. So for the, the measurement of angle P and the measurement of, of angle R is equal to 50. Therefore, the sides that are opposite those two angles are equal to each other. So we're going to set 5x plus 3 equal to 10x minus 2. The rest becomes algebra in order to find the value of x. First, we're going to subtract 5x from both sides. So 5x minus 5x is 0, so we're going to bring down 3. And then 5, 10x minus 5x equals 5x, and we're going to bring down the negative 2 or minus 2. The next step is to add 2 to both sides. 3x plus 2 equals 5. 2 minus 2 or minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. So we're going to have 5 equals 5x. The next step in isolating the variable x is to divide 5 from both sides. So 5 divided by 5 is equal to 5x divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 equals 1, and 5x divided by 5 equals x. So 1 equals x, or x equals 1. The next step is to substitute the 1 for the x. So in line segment PQ, we're going to substitute the 1 for the x. So 5 times 1 plus 3. 5 times 1 equals 5. We're going to add the 3. 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. So the measurement of line segment QP or PQ is equal to 8 units. Next, we're going to find the measurement of line segment QR or RQ. We're going to substitute the 1 for the X. So 10 times 1 minus 2. 10 times 1 is equal to 10. And then we're going to subtract 2. 10 minus 2 equals 8. Final answer is 8. Students should now be able to use the base angles theorem and its converse to find the measurements of angles and sides for triangles.